This is for the players. I'm Ryan Betson. I'm Max Cooper. And this is for the players, the pop culture as PlayStation podcast with the 40 years of playing PlayStation and five plus years in the games meeting. And I'd like to thank you for joining us in this PlayStation conversation. This PlayStation conversation happens every Monday morning at 8 a.m. on podcast services, including Spotify, 9 a.m. on those YouTubes. If you'd like to be part of future conversations, head on over to our socials, our Facebook, Discord, Twitter, Instagram. All the links are in the description below. If you want to join the conversation as it happens, head over to twitch.tv slash the pop cultures where you can watch us record this show live every saturday 4 p.m australian eastern whatever who's my time and if you happen to like what you hear why don't you share the conversation tell your friends tell your family about this little playstation pod if you want to support us financially you can patreon.com slash the pop or as a merchandise store popcultures.com slash shop we can buy shirts and other sort of shit with our logos on it also like subscribe five star rating and all that mumbo jumbo <clears throat> so max did you survive the tornado this week? Yeah, well, I wasn't in it. Apparently- Oh, fun w- fact, for those that don't know, here in the <laughs> Geelong area, we, we we are like not, like we're a coast E town, but- We're coast adjacent. We're coast adjacent. And then apparently this week, they were like, guess the fuck what? You're going to have a tornado. And there was like a mini tornado that went through like two suburbs that are nowhere near the bay. So that was fun. Yeah. Um, well, I, I drove through it to go to work. So mm. I saw all the lightnings and the and the stuffs. That it, was intense. Dude, I I think now I don't know how this exactly went down. <clears throat> I, don't, I don't know whether I woke up before the lightning or due to the lightning. All I know is I woke up and it was pitch black. I'm like, cool. I have to piss. Because I'm an old man now and because I'm drinking so much more water, I just piss all the time. So I get up, I go to the bathroom, pee, stand there. Cool. And next thing this big flash of light here i am thinking i'm about to get abduct, abducted with my dick out you know it's like <laughs> get, rev- get ready like, for the probe ah! and, then, and then it's like, Goo, I'm like oh good and you're like I don't, I don't remember turning any lights on <laughs> yeah. dude it, it was insane it lit up my entire bathroom and then and then thunder like it must have been right over our house well apparently my kid slept through it but ali woke up and she's like should i bring the child into the bed with me or <laughs> well like i we have we have a habit of leaving our laundry door open because we normally like i don't know whatever mm. i'm like is the laundry door open and he's like i don't know you gotta check I'm like i don't want to check <laughs> i went to sleep <laughs> so at any point in that evening my laundry could have been absolutely mushed totally could have been Thankfully, it wasn't. House, still intact. Damages at my, at my in-laws, though. Complete damages. Yeah. Trampoline, tipped over. We will rebuild. <laughs> well, my my in-laws, uh, my sister-in-law's place out in Lara, mm. their trampoline got, t- <laughs> got flipped. Damn. Dude, James, <laughs> devastated. He loves, loves that trampoline. Yeah. It was very sad to hear that it had been flipped over. I mean, it can just be reflipped. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. It's not really- End okay. of the world. You didn't, you're not the trampoline. You've not lived that trampoline's life. Oh, I've been flipped. <laughs> <laughs> so apart from uh, dodging tornadoes, how you been, dude? Yeah, not too bad. Uh, pretty quiet week for me this week. Yeah. Just trying to catch up on as much sleep as I possibly can with my child is still teething. Mm-hmm. Apparently, she doesn't want to stick or conform to the norm time frame of teething. That's babies. So she's got like five teeth coming through all at once. Fucking A. So she's constantly... Hopped up on Panadol and Nurofen and Bongella and- We could all be so lucky. <laughs> that sounds amazing. That's like, like the best life. Like every four hours, she's getting Panadol. Every six hours, she's getting Nurofen. Every three hours, she's- Bongella like- <laughs> up her face. Can't feel nothing. Yeah. So she's been she's been keeping me awake a lot during the day, mm. which is rough because I work all night. <laughs> yeah. That's a problem. Yeah. Um, yeah, I've been doing a few movie marathons with the wife. Oh, what were you watching? Well, I, I went out and bought the uh, 4K box set of Harry Potter because my, <sighs> my wife has it, not seen them all. Does it look good? It looks... Well, it's funny because although I'm playing it on a 4K system, the TV that we're using is not 4K. The fuck? Because we... Because our, our good TV is in our bedroom, not in the lounge room. Ah, smart call. <laughs> smart call. So it, we keep getting the warnings of to uh, experience this better. Please use a 4K <laughs> enabled TV. <laughs> <laughs> 
but it still looks good. Yeah. Uh, it's been great because I just finished re reading all the books, which is one of the reasons why I wanted to watch them all. Mm-hmm. And uh, she's, my wife's hilarious. She's like, she doesn't know any of the characters' names. She tries really hard to like remember them. So for the third, when we started watching the third one, she's like, oh, it's, this is the one with uh, Buttwig, right? And I'm like, who the hell's Buttwig? She's like, you know, that, that flying horse thing. I'm like, fucking Buckbeak. <laughs> I'm like, you mean Buckbeak? Buckbeak, you heathen. <laughs> and then she hates Dobby for some reason. So I, think I, I can get that. <laughs> nah. I don't fuck with that, but I can get it. And then, you know, I got some interesting news. Apparently, I'm a part of uh, this class action lawsuit against uh, Wait, what? the Robo Debt system from Centrelink. So that's, oh, so that's yeah. fun. I'm like, I looked at it and they're like, do you want to opt out? I'm like, not really. Like, no, I'll get in there. <laughs> I'll get in there. I'll see, see how this goes. <laughs> but, 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 you know, push comes to shove, you might get some money back. Uh, yeah, hopefully. That, that's sweet money life. Mm. Uh, I myself have been a pretty quiet week. Uh, my boss is on, on leave. So we've been. Uh, That's a bit rude. Oh, I know. Well, we haven't had leave since. I don't know. It's been a long time since we've had leave. Oh, fair enough. We've been. Like, we have really because oh, so because with in the in the dis- disability mental health services, mm. it does tend to follow uh, like a school sort yep. of setup. So there's like, for, but for us, we use trimesters. Um, and we didn't have a break in the last trimester. We cut our holiday, like our Christmas leave, to like a three days out of 10 so like we we haven't had like fucking any leave mm. um and he's like because we do a lot more than our job descriptions are mm. as well so we're both pretty exhausted but he goes even harder so I'm, he's like can i have some leave i'm like what are you fucking asking me for you're my boss he's like oh cool i'm having next week off I'm like deal I'm like how can i say no <laughs> <laughs> i have no option to say no uh but yeah so i've been running the joint which has been fine um you know it's been pretty pretty straightforward um. Yeah. Oh. Uh. Before we get into the games we've been playing, let's get into the get less fat. I was. I was gonna. Update. I was before you get into that. I was gonna say, are you guys still doing? Are you still doing your job from remotely, or are you? Yeah. So because of the nature of you, our site, are you taking clients in? Again? No, because of the nature of our site, we will not have any clients until it's pretty much done. Skis. Okay. Um. Just because in, we we can't like like you can have twenty people in there with social distancing. Like well, with social distancing rules, I can have three people in this room, and that's myself and two other staff. Mm. that are normally here we don't have we don't have room for clients so until it's all done we yeah, are a hundred percent online which is how great. are you finding that okay like the clients still the clients are, the clients are adapting i think i've discussed it before we have uh with some of our clients um you know with them being on the spectrum they actually they're actually communicating better yep because they get to have that luxury of the screen mm. um and ideally that that'll translate over to in person when we come back and they can sort of build on those skills that they've already gained some of them it's like some of them are really flourishing online which mm. is fantastic uh but yeah we get less fat update not a lot of movement at the station this week um i'm pushing close to 4 15 now so it was 14 last week so i'm not quite there but you know because i did have a little bit of a rebound at the start of the week so i've been doing this sort of like uh, flat huh flat huh. Mm. so I'm, I'm kind of in that flat again yep um <clears throat> which is which is a bit poo but there has been some movement <clears throat> which is good which is good happy with that how about yourself yeah, I'm the same. Um, I'm kind of flat at the moment from from last week. I've been a bit... Uh, I've swapped my diet o- around a bit. Mm. I'm now eating <clears throat> uh, fruit and yogurt for breakfast as opposed to a shake. And I'm doing my shakes for lunch and um, like as a... And then having a normal meal. So I'm cutting back one shake. You're reducing the shakes. Yeah. Why is that? It was wrecking me. What do you mean? I was having horrendous stomach issues. Oh, that poops. So I'm just like, I'm just, I'm just gonna have some nat yogurt with some some fruit for breakfast. Oh, interesting. We're, we're try and in, try and change it up a bit. We're getting into your poops here because <laughs> right, I'll talk about my poops enough for the two of us. But um, yeah, okay. Cool. Try and change it up a bit. Yeah. So. What have you been playing? Uh, what have I been playing? I played uh, Crucible, Amazon, Amazon's new game mm. that came out on Steam. Seems alright. Uh, no Aussie servers. Oh, sorry. Shame. Just remembered, fun fact, if you do want to hear more about my little weight loss journey, um, I'm, I guested on, uh, there's another YouTube channel called That Fat Guy. He has a, a weekly interview thing called uh, Fat Chat. Um, I, I was interviewed by him this week, so it'll be oh, up cool. today as the time of this goes live. So on the Monday, I completely forgot until half of your sentence. <laughs> my apologies. Go. That's all right. Um, been playing Mafia 2, Definitive Edition. Well, that's which, the main topic of today we'll is Mafia 2. Talk about it a bit we'll later. talk about that a little bit later. Uh, and then that's about it. 
Yep. I just have not been playing much. <clears throat> yeah, I myself, I've been playing yeah, Mafia 2 mm. primarily. Um, I put a lot of time into that ahead of this review. Um, oh, and, and GTA on PC since it went free. Yeah, nice. Uh, what else have I been playing? Shit. Yeah, it's like that, isn't it? Uh, well, we, we booted up Persona 5 Royal at work. Oh, yeah. So it's, it's, it's a long story within this show um, that I poop on Persona. I mean, most, it's not a story, it's fact. Yeah. <laughs> Mostly within my... Most reasons, because with my clientele, like for a lot of them with their ASD, their obsession, their, their big hyper-focus is JRPGs or Jap- Jap- Japanese culture. Um, and then some of them specifically, it is Persona. So Persona is like a trigger word for me. It, like, I have almost like PTSD when I hear, think about it because the amount of times I've been bombarded in my face. Um, but saying that though, when, it, when the 5 did release, I really enjoyed it. I actually mm. quite enjoyed it. I played... <clears throat> up to like two and a bit dungeons or something. I go into like the, just when they unlock the, the subway to sort of do whatever you want down there. Mm-hmm. It's kind of where I, where I bumped, where I b- bounced out. Um, and Persona 5 Royal, I'm playing it. I'm like, oh, I remembered why I like this. I'm not going to tell anyone that I'm playing it except for right now, <laughs> but like I'll probably chip away at that. I think we're going to be playing it at work, but I think I'm going to also play a little bit on the side myself <clears throat> uh, just because it's good. So. Oh, and I played uh, Iron Man VR. Oh yeah. Well, That's tell me about that. Time. <clears throat> it's rad. Um, granted, I I stupidly tried to play it sitting down because I was exhausted when I when I flicked it on, and it's very hard to play Iron Man VR sitting because mm. obviously when you when you're doing the flying, they they want you to stand like Iron Man. You know, you know, got to have your hands down, facing outwards to, to propel yourself. And I may have flown into my house by accident. That was fun. Uh, the shooting's on point. Looks really nice. Um, I'm. I got to set up my PSVR a little bit better mm. so I can I can really dive into it. But uh, first impressions looks looks great. Well, see, I, I attempted to boot up Iron Man VR today, tonight, today, this afternoon. <laughs> Probably not realize for a second there. Um, however, uh, it turns out it looks as if my kid has broken my move controllers. So, well uh, like the one of them's flat or dead, the other one doesn't want to connect to my PlayStation anymore. So, because I know he likes to, would like to run around with them. So that's going to be a problem. Um, so ideally, I'd like to play it before next week. If not, I'm going to have to buy some new controls. I'll just come over and flog mine. Yeah. That's a pretty good idea. Because so, I mean- I'm, I don't really use mine all that often. I mean, in the news, like there, there is a a pack for I'm in VR where there's the full PSVR bundle where you get the headset, mm. the camera, the game, the move controllers, but there is also just one with the game and move controllers. Yeah, that might need to be an option. So, looking at, look, if this does, if because the ones I'm using are the original PS3 ones. Like when the PS3, uh, so when the uh, VR got announced, uh, and it's like we you know uses the move controllers. I'm like sick. So that that day, I jumped on eBay, picked up a bunch of two two of them for like twenty bucks. Mm. Not even I think it was twenty bucks for two of them. Um, you know, knowing that they would be re-releasing at some point, and they'd be like, okay, and they did, and it was like one hundred twenty bucks for brand new ones. I'm like, nah, I'm so glad I paid next to nothing for those move controls. Saying that though, I'm pretty sure they're busted now. So, <laughs> which ones are yours? The spanking one of the new ones, yeah. Oh, I might have to borrow because I bought I bought them when I bought my PSVR headset. Yeah. Yeah, I might have to come swing him. Yeah, that's cool. Give him a bell. Uh, but anyway, that's enough of what we've been playing. Let's get into the section we call Inform the Players. We tell you about what happened this week in PlayStation. Well, let's kick things off. So Days of Play. Sony's annual Days of Play sale is set to return as of tomorrow. So 25th of May. Uh, the PlayStation Store will bring price cuts on a wide range of digital PlayStation 4 games. And uh, this will be active across the the regions of usa and both europe which we get we're in europe we're yeah. we're we're the european europe peoples um <laughs> all the way till the 17th of june apparently yeah so this will also have uh in-store retail yeah so previously uh, it's been well. like uh reduced price on consoles bundles of psvr cheaper so maybe there might be some move controls on cheap mm. so now's a good time for my controls to die i suppose um, that'd be awesome. If I, you know, that'd be cool. Uh, there's also, yeah, a lot of the select games or the the classics or whatever, they tend to, the essentials, they tend to go on cheap um, as well as general sales. Now, there's normally also a uh, unique themed PS4 that goes with it. So, like, uh, last year it was a, like a, sh- um, a gray with the symbols on it. Mm. The year before it was blue with gold 
uh, symbols on the front, yeah. which is one my wife has in the spare bedroom. My like, spare bedroom in our bedroom. Fucking idiot. <laughs> It's the spare console in our bedroom, what I was meant to say. Yeah. Um, yeah, so you can get those specific... They haven't announced that yet. Now, I'm not, I'm not sure what they're going to be doing with the PS5 literally at the back end of this year. And they, they're they obviously the Last of Us 2. Yeah, and uh, additionally, console. they've just announced the Last of Us PS4 Pro, uh, which is a standard black PS4 Pro, but it, it's got uh, Ali's tattoo sort of etched out of the top. Mm. So it's like it's actually indented, which is which is a cool little uh, you know feature for your fingers. Looks pretty cool. Um, I'm not going to buy it, but it's cool. I mean, I was close to pre-ordering a controller, and then I'm like, "Am I ever going to use PS4 controllers?" Well, I, I made year? this. I was going to make the same call as well because I have a couple of controllers. Like I've got, you know, I've got the custom God War one back there. Mm. I've got the purple one, and like, well, the purple one was a given. Like, I've got some custom, another custom one. So that last one's one's really good because, like, I I regret not buying the the God of War one, which had the cool little mm. symbol of the uh, you know on there and stuff. But I, you know, I didn't. I was going to buy that one, but I didn't. I was going to buy that that um, see-throughy blue one for like the 100 million and I was like oh, but I didn't uh, so I was like well the same went here it was like nah yeah my basic thought was you know with PlayStation 5 with all 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 pointing to coming out this year I'm like do I really need another PlayStation 4 controller correct yeah like if I'm like we well, me smart I'll save this money considering the fact that I have money. 5 in my house currently yeah I'll save this money and I'll get a second DualShock 5 or a mm. DualSense yeah controller but yeah, so it's always they'll be they'll always save some to reduce some cool games on cheap, which is always <clears> nice. Yeah. Speaking of PS5 though, speaking of P- PS5, uh, publisher All In Games has today announced another game to add to the growing list of confirmed PlayStation 5 titles named Paradise Lost, scheduled for release later this year on next gen platforms, and tells the tale of a 12 year old boy caught up in a world where World War II never ended in 1945. <laughs> I'm pretty keen for this. Okay. I think it sounds like a really cool premise. Oh, is it horrible? The idea of the world never stopped. Mm. So our press release reads, quote, Paradise Lost is a, mis- is a mystery adventure game telling the story of a 12-year-old boy who finds a mysterious Nazi bunker while roaming a post-nuclear Polish wasteland. Your choices will gradually affect the game's characters, but also its visual style, environment, and its sound effects. Sweet. Mm. Uh, this is said to be a journey through the five stages of grief, which is reflected in its dialogue, its Ooh. character interactions, and its environments. I actually like that. Yeah. I'm super keen. It sounds really cool. All right, I'm in. A different spin on the post-apocalyptic wasteland Well, because there's games. always, like, there's been many, many stories, uh, many, many games specifically about ideas of wars not ending. Like, I think, you know, the whole, like, Wolfenstein is based on entirely around that, like, what if the Germans won? Yeah. And then what happens? And like, there's a lot of alternate future stories, you know, where someone wins this war and that changes the, the course of time. But um, I'm sure there's some that there's the discuss that's never stopped, but I like this idea. I'm enjoying the idea that, because if you can tell that cool narrative within it as well, mm. you know, I guess it's, it's probably one of those same things as when you think about like Celeste and the story of like mental health and, you know, that, that dragon cancer, which is a fucking horrible game. Now that you're a parent, please don't play that game. It's a brilliant game. But yeah. You will, you, will, you will not recover. I am still hurt from that game. Um, but like you know, when they, when they was about to tell about this this greater narrative, this bigger subtext, rather than here's our game where the war it never ended. Mm. So I'm I'm down for that. I, I'm can check it out. PS Five. I'm looking for games. I imagine. Yeah. Uh, so due to uh, some Twitter changes this week, Naughty Dog have been able to troll their trolls. All right. So just to add to that, so <laughs> context around what Twitter did. So this week, Twitter removed. Uh, you can make a post where you can remove responses. Yeah, so people can only respond to it if you specifically tag them in it or mention them. Correct. I'm not a fan. Because that means people can make a bunch of really outlandish statements and like you cannot reply. So you can you can do the the old Twitter quote thing and mm. retweet quote it and yeah. then post whatever your what you what you want to do. But it's good in this sense of people who have been actively trying to spoil this game. It, it's Last of Us, man. Yeah, The Last of Us. It, it it allows the studio and the developers who want to talk about it. Dash in the chat, huge fan. Of course he is. Because Dash <laughs> loves making outlandish statements. So it's actually perfect for Dash. I mean, you know, it's fine. I don't have a problem with it. But if you don't want people to reply to your stuff, either don't post or yeah. just, you know. 
That's right. And then just yelling into the void. Well, even though the internet, the I mean, entire thing is about yelling in the void. I mean, the whole thing is yelling into the yeah, void. Yeah, but sometimes the void yells back. And like, and then no one likes that. Yeah. <laughs> they get upset. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, I, I mean, it, it just allows the developers to talk about it without too much of a fear of someone coming in and be like, hey, this is what happens. And then everyone, you know, suffering for it. Which is, look, that is certainly positive, but I guarantee that was not the intention. The intention was to so people that like, you know, the president of the United States of America, as an example, would likely misuse that to tweet his bullshit or as an example, as a very specific example. And where no, know how to no one on. could respond. I don't think you know, like, because th- there is that concern. That means there's like people, very far left people making mm. these big claims, very far right people making these claims. You want to talk about, because like the majority of political discourse seems to take place on Twitter. Like if you look at any article right now, it's like this, this politician tweeted, like that's not news, mate. But apparently it is. And like, if you, if you can literally stifle the conversation. Yeah. You know what I mean? I, like I can come out there and says, uh, you know, Max, I'm not tag you, obviously, likes big butts and he cannot lie. However, he's in fact lying. And you're like, no, no, I do like big butts. Oh, no. <laughs> yeah, it's just, again, I, I can't say it. I mean, I'm one of those people that it's very much- I don't know, understand it. I'm, I'm very much one of those people that's like, eh, water off a duck's back. I was yeah. like, I couldn't care less what someone yells about something on Twitter. I just, yeah, but I just it negates care. the whole conversation system that it's Twitter sort of built on. Yeah, I know. I mean, I know a lot of, there were a lot of tweets about it this week of, of people I mean, could joking. On, but- yeah, the, the one was like, you know, first person to reply, I'll give them a million dollars. I was like, ah, oh, you can't reply. <laughs> <laughs> like, you know, it's stupid, stupid stuff like that. But, you know, when used in this context to try and prevent something from, from being... Uh, ruined for mm. other people's enjoyment. I guess I can see how it's useful. Yeah. Dreams PSVR beta was announced earlier this week. Oh, but it's going to work differently than any other beta. Oh, it starts with an introductory video call. Oh, oh. Then you'll be given access to the PSVR support for two weeks in June. Quote during which time you will be required to provide short reports every one to two days on your experience. So you're literally playtesting. It's not a beta, it's a playtest. Once the test is over, you'll speak with the developers again, uh, this time in an interview all about your time playing Dreams in PSVR. However, it is more like actual work, literally getting paid £200 via bank transfer or PayPal. Okay, so you are QA. Yes, so you'll have to sign an NDA, you will get paid. That is, so that, yes, it's beta testing, but it's not. Yeah, so they're getting the people that have spent a lot of their time playing dreams who know the system who want to who want to use psvr for it they're going to get them to make sure it works properly or to see how it works in the hands of people who have been making creations already not in vr how do you feel about them uh handing on handing off their work to to uh outsourcing their work to the public essentially um this will be interesting there are some interesting lines there Mm. Um, because it's it's a situation of because these people aren't yes they're paid but they're not like official QA testers Mm. they're fans of the thing and it it almost it it feels like a misuse of your fan base but they're also developers because they're developing things inside your software yeah but they're not (laughs) It's one of the. It's one of those things. It's it's, it's almost the exact. Like devil's advocate. It's almost the exact same argument that like, you know, people that uh, are the expectation. You know, because it's your business, you will put more hours than you're paid for. Like right now, these people are being paid a blanket two hundo. If like because a lot of them, I imagine, would want to probably be seen well in the eyes of uh, of the eyes of uh, Media Molecule because they're like you know we've heard about people getting jobs outside of this. Maybe if I do really hard and go really you know put in like tons of hours and do this and that, maybe they'll notice me. And then suddenly you've worked X amount of hours and you're being paid like two bucks an hour for your for your QA testing. And like if there's no like. Count out your hours and we'll pay you your hours because that's an employee. That's mm. a contractor. 
that isn't happening. So it it has the potential to be a massive misuse of your fan base. However, I like the sentiment. So the sentiment of like using the people that were are playing it, that are doing it, and like they understand it, they should be rewarded. So this is only available in Europe. It's not available anywhere else. Sure. So, I mean, I, that doesn't really make too much of a difference. But it's it's interesting that I mean, it's such a an in depth process to just get mm. accepted. But it's it's the same the same argument because it, it's very similar. To remember when they announced uh, with uh, 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 Beyond Good and Evil Two? Mm. They're like, oh, there's this online for- thing where you can submit music, you can submit art, and you know maybe you can appear in the game. So then you know, like. Therefore, you're asking from your audience to do your work for you. Mm. And, like, they're not going to get compensated, not get recognized, not going to get paid. We're here, at least, they're like, oh, they're getting paid. But all they're doing is being like, so this person put 400 hours in, right? What Did you pay him? Well, yeah. <laughs> you pay him what? Did you pay him minimum wage? No. No. <laughs> cool concept, 100% can, can be misused. Yeah. That's the I mean, I mean, I agree. It can be misused. Yeah. In premise. I mean, it could I'm also be, right I mean, depending on how good you are, it could be misused by the people who are getting accepted in the beta test. They could, you know, they could, they could spend 20 minutes to get paid 200 pounds. Uh, Puck also adds, and the artist getting paid was an issue that didn't get resolved for a week or two after mm. that announcement. Mm. It's a cool idea. Just, it's not, it's not that easy. Fucking pay, just employ them, employ people. <laughs> so, following on from PlayStation State of Play about Ghost of Tsushima, Ooh, they have reiterated first party to another. Mm, I like it. They have reiterated that it will have difficulty settings. Difficulty settings were originally mentioned back in 2018 after the title was first revealed. So, quote, First of all, we do have difficulty. If the game is too easy and you want it to be a much more challenging experience, you can take it up a notch. If you find the game is a little too hard, you can take it down a notch. This is an effort to try and get as many players as possible. Makes sense. Has there been discussion that it didn't have one? Like, no, this I seems think- to be pretty g- of, of a given conversation. I mean, considering the fact that it was, they, they mentioned it when it was first announced, I guess, you know, people may have gotten the wrong idea from, because I don't think they mentioned difficulty at all in the state of play. No. Um, and I haven't heard anything about the difficulty of it since since it's well released. maybe there's been a bit of discussion because you know are uh, following the state of play and you see people getting like ganked with one sort one hit from a sword and it's like yeah well they they go into that saying that um it's been tricky to balance the game it can't it, it can't be so hard that you give up in the first 15 minutes but that would be frustrating for a lot of people you need to you know you need to learn how to play the game mm. and have a chance to to experience it because obviously if you watch that state of play everyone's dying in one to two hits and I would imagine it's the same for you. Yeah, but it'd be pretty weird, like, if, you know, everyone dies in two hot, two, two shots, but you can take about eight. Yeah. Because I'm fucking supreme. Mm. <laughs> Dumb. Yeah. So, there is difficulty for those who want a harder or easier game. Mm. Well, I only say that because they, they clearly are going for a more immersive style of game. You know, you can see by the limited hard, going where the wind takes you, um, and that sort of stuff as mm. well. You know, like, it's... Yeah, if you want to have that level of realism... There has to be some caveats to that. The pandemic has been helping the games industry. Good. So one of the biggest beneficiaries of the ongoing pandemic has been the video game industry. That I can confirm with my day job being in the video game space. We're doing great. It has registered its biggest ever April in the US last month. Consumer spent $1.5 billion, which is up 73% year over year. Yeah, man. Mm. The hardware spending has increased by 163%, with Nintendo Switch securing the highest year-to-date dollar reduce. Animal Crossing, baby. Mm, for any system in US history. Uh, accessory sales are up with PlayStation 4 DualShock 4. And the top 10 PlayStation 4 software for April, Final Fantasy VII Remake number 1. I presume this is American? Uh, yeah, this is, this is for the US market. So Final Fantasy VII Remake number 1, Call of Duty Modern Warfare number 2. NBA 2K20 number That's three. That's like six bucks. I don't know what was. I don't know what's going on, but NBA 2K in the last like twenty in the last couple of weeks has been like nine dollars in PS4. It was four dollars fifty on the US store. It was seven fifty in the AU store. That's ridiculous. It's not selling well. 
Go too many microtransactions. <laughs> <laughs> Grand Theft Auto makes an appearance. MLB Show makes an appearance. Resident Evil 3, Persona 5 Royal, Minecraft, and Predator Hunting Grounds all make appearances in the top 10 slots for April. Predator. Predator. Uh, yeah. Mm. <laughs> uh, River Park, way too many microtransactions. Way. <laughs> yeah. yeah. That's pretty good. Look, once again, it complete makes complete sense. And the discussion when around the discussion is, can you like stay at home for a little while? People are like, okay, and just play games. Yep, it's pretty much what it is. Yeah, like, uh, what was it during this pandemic? I've like I've been spending a lot of money on video games mostly because um, I'm we're very lucky and we have a luxury where a lot of games will come our way, or mm. we're playing old games because you know they've all have come our way in the past. Like I've been spending my money on minis. <laughs> I mean, so like, there's people are spending people are spending money on hobbies they normally wouldn't. I mean, I can't complain. I just spent two hundred and sixty dollars on a board game. Yeah, you bought Frosthaven. <laughs> oh, speaking of, how do you, are you enjoying your ducks? You like hey Dark Souls mini set? Man, that looks so good. Sweet. I'm so keen to play it again and die instantaneously. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, for those that know, I have also been painting uh, the minis for Max's copy of Dark Souls, the board game. Cool. Glad to like them. Mm, they know they look amazing. Way better than I could have done. <laughs> Hands of a surgeon. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Summer Games Fest celebrates indies. Jeff Keighley announced two more digital events titled the Developer Showcase Events. These live streams will place the focus on indie studios on the 22nd of June and the 20th of July. Nice to see the indie guys getting a which is good. Like it's because it's it's, uh, that, that's one of the, one of the biggest problems that'll be lost from E3. Well, sorry, one of the biggest yeah it makes sense. One of the biggest issues to come out of E3 is that without having that floor space people to, for people to go and, and, and schmooze and schmooze and showcase their games mm. there is a big hurdle here because a, a lot with e3 primarily being a trade event a lot of it is come publishers being like okay let's go sweep the indie floor and let's see who we can get on you know what i mean like who, who's got something that we can we can sell or whatever and that's what happened to them. yeah it's a real shame this allows for, for them to show their games and then we go okay we'll make a call mm. You know, maybe publishers will get will get a list of like these are contact numbers for all the, all the indies. Find the one you want, give them a buzz, go from there. Yeah, it's 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 really good that they're getting time to showcase their, their yeah. work. But really, Jeff Keighley should be focusing on one thing, one thing alone, Max. Telling us when this fucking Harry Potter RPG is coming out. <laughs> He's announcing all these things, and he gave us Tony Hawks. Thank you, Jeff. <laughs> you're, you're a kind man. Keep it coming. <laughs> Where's the wizards? <laughs> yeah, where the wizards? Where's our Batman? Um. <laughs> One other, other thing things been waiting for forever. Well, here's before. something that might be coming out soon. Oh, that's sweet. Gran Turismo oh, 7. I don't care about that. <laughs> Gran Turismo 7 PS5 leak. Uh, earlier this week, Instagram account Next Level Racing, which makes official cockpits for driving sim games on Sony platforms, uh, tweeted to ask its followers which racing title they were looking forward to this year. Uh, and it turns out they used the logo for Gran Turismo. And everyone's like, oh, that's interesting. Cause... Didn't we discuss this last week? <laughs> mm, so there is an update. Did we? No, I don't believe so. Oh, it must be, there, on, must there be on something else. All right. That, that, yeah. So uh, the update from uh, Next Level Racing posted the following statement. Quote, our team has recognized that a recent post by us using a logo has been misinterpreted by media and it does not reflect any information from our end and we deny knowing any information regarding the launch of Gran Turismo 7. There have been assumptions made in the media that are quite simply untrue. Due to this, we have decided to take down our our previous social post. Our graphic design department uses the mock logo that is circulated on the internet. So, okay, it must have been on the Dash Gamer podcast, which I guessed on this week. Go check it out. Mm. Uh, Dashgamer.com. Yeah, because we were discussing around our first parties, and I was like, what's the bet Gran Turismo is the fucking launch title? Mm. And the reason being, A, Polyphony event ain't done shit. A GT Sport was like four years ago. Mm. um, So why not? And two, what would make... Like, what style of game always makes new tech look amazing? Racing games. Fucking racing games. So, cool. Well, and then they're like, we retract everything we just said because we got in trouble. <laughs> but if, if they're a company that works exclusively, and I, I presume that they're a pretty big deal. Yeah, well, they make they make racing simulator cockpits for racing games. Yeah. So they may have been speculating, but unless they work, like, a, unless they're officially endorsed or licensed by PlayStation, um, you know. Whoops. Whoops. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh. City Project Project has become the most valuable game company in Europe. 
CD Projekt, the firm behind Witcher 3 and the upcoming Cyberpunk 2077, is reportedly the most valuable video game company in Europe. The Polish organization has apparently overtaken Ubisoft in terms of marketing capitalization and is now worth a whopping $8.13 billion. The aforementioned French publisher sits at 8.12. Udo Dick! <laughs> Take that, Ubisoft. Slightly <laughs> less million! <laughs> Uh, it is worth noting that CD Projekt is also responsible for the PC digital games marketplace, GOG, but it's still crazy to think that the company's value has rocketed so quickly. It was valued at $6.8 billion back in December 2019. So it's gained, what, 2 point something billion since yeah, December last I, I year. I do think GOG plays a massive part of that, and I guess the whole the hype around Cyberpunk. and But, like, Ubisoft... Ubisoft... To, had to do recovery remember when they were trying to be purchased by like vivendi for mm. a longest time so like they had to spend a lot a lot of time rebuilding and then they did rebuild everyone's like yay and then they're like hey um remember ghost recon breakpoint yeah everyone's like boo and now they've got to rebuild again so uh reports are saying that the firm's stock this is cd project their firm's stock have risen by twenty one thousand percent over the last decade yeah it's good good for them Sweet, but my problem is this all. Sp- this is all, like stocks, Max stonks, stonks. <laughs> they fucking mean nothing. It's perceived value of something. Yeah. So like, Cyberpunk could come out and be like, mm, it's not quite as good as we all hyped. They're like, oh, all right, stonks down. And then they just like they just release a sneaky Witcher three expansion again and stonks up, stonks up. <laughs> And next thing they start dealing in turnips, stonks way up. <laughs> Don't even get me started. <laughs> so this week, uh, Sony, in their corporate strategy document, have decided that uh, the PlayStation Five is a speedy boy. Well, this is look. <laughs> we're just gonna get into this now. Yeah, fucking think. It's got all this sweet tech in it. They're like, hey, here's this new hard drive. It's gonna like jerk your dick off. It's gonna be sweet. Quite Going so fast. Quote, the evolution of speed in the next-gen console. That sounds like Yeah, that sounds great. So the console's custom SSD is the key factor. Actually, what that sounds like, that sounds like a sequel to the the (laughs) Keanu Reeves movie, Speed. The document reads, quote, In order to further enhance the sense of immersion in games, we expect to improve not just the resolution, but the speed of games. For example, through a custom-designed high-speed SSD, we plan to to realize game data processing speeds that are approximately 100 times faster than the PS4. Game load times should be much shorter, and players should be able to move through immense game worlds in almost an instant. So, not too much more. They haven't re- They're just reiterating kind of what- Can Mark- they fucking <laughs> give us new news? I don't want to hear about the alleged speed of this fucking hard drive so, again. So, they just- Show me the thing! <laughs> Show me the hard drive. Show me the hard drive! Like, this is ridiculous. How many different ways can they reprint the exact same article about this conference, like, you know, six months ago, where they're like, it has a sold, so everyone's like, oh, sold state hard drive. Yes, give me all that. And they're like- Oh, I'm going to repeat this for the next four months. Sweet. No, this is not enough. It's not enough, Max. I mean, I agree. It's getting ridiculous here. Because every article is like, new details on PS5, and it's the exact same information, slightly reworded, and it's fucking annoying. Give us info. (laughs) Also, what do you think about this this news? (laughs) <laughs> I mean, it, it's it's like I was go- like I was going to say before you went on your mad rant. It was literally what Mark Sony said in his uh, Fuck. in his talk a, a few months ago. Like they're just reiterating that that no matter what you see about the numbers from Microsoft, our solid state drive is a speedy boy. <laughs> okay, you know what's you know what's really cool? Proving it. That's what it comes down to. Like you can speculate on potential. Look. Me as a human, my written potential is amazing. I could do so much, but you know what? I'm not. Because on paper, I could be awesome. Reality, <laughs> shit house. That is where it's at. And right now they're like, you know, you know, Ryan, you have the potential to be a really fast runner if you applied yourself. I'm like, but I'm not going to. <laughs> Therefore, I am not a speedy boy, but I could be. That's what they're doing. Back it the fuck up, PlayStation. Give us hard numbers, but not numbers. Just fucking give us the hard drive. Hard, hard drive. Give us hard, hard drive. Show it off. Put it in people's hands. 
Let us see the speed and not some shonky ass phone video of someone playing Spider-Man in a room once. <laughs> Make it real. Let us see it. So earlier this week, Adam Boy's former VP of third party relations at PlayStation was part of this transition after appearing on stage at E3 2015. And he's talking about Sony's change to their approach to E3. Quote, I think in general, you look at the cadence and lifestyle of platforms or life cycle of platforms, sorry. And I think you only have a certain amount of time you want to make it super impactful. And unfortunately, I think you sometimes have to make hard decisions about what creative content can go where. Some of it was put in the pre-show, some of it will be put in the post-show, and some of it was during show announcements. I think stylistically, if we look at most content now, whether it's PlayStation State of Play or Nintendo's Directs or even Microsoft Series X's reveal, it looks like we're... we're migrating more towards that compilation based approach where people just go and see content 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 and then with the xbox series x they go a little deeper after the presentation it feels like that's where we're going a little bit more and i think because we're in a faster give it to me now tiktok era people just want to see adam boys do you want to sound super (laughs) old or what whereas i think if we look at 2013 2014 or even 2015 e3 now when you look at it it feels a little bit dated And even when I look at some of the scripts I was using, it was very much, look at me, I'm enjoying myself, but I'm also going to talk about this fun game. Whereas people nowadays don't care about the spokesperson, show me the stuff. If we look at Mm. America's Funniest Home Videos right now, they're just fail compilations. I don't need a host talking me through it, just show me the stuff. I agree and disagree (laughs) with that, but I'll let you go first. I've read three rants now. Okay, look- Part of me agrees with the, in this day and age, everyone just wants to see the content. They don't want some guy standing there making corny jokes and mm. just just show me the stuff. Just just get up there, introduce who you are, say we're going to see this, 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 and this, and then show me that, 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 and that. Mm. And then get off. Yeah. So that I, <laughs> like, I agree that, yeah, cool. All right. Online delivery, total way of the future. Uh, compilations make sense. However, we like deep dives. If you, if we look at um, Ghost of Tsushima, as mm. an, Ghost of Tsushima, we keep saying, I say it right. Ghost of Tsushima, uh, they they have like that is the most successful state of play period, right? Mm. Because they've deep dived on something and it's exciting. So there's none of this surface level bullshit. There is enough surface level bullshit on the internet right now. Because you mean that's that's that's, that's, all, that's all things are. That article pr- prior about the soul state surface level bullshit. I've got some more surface level bullshit for you after oh, this. Oh, can't wait. Um, <laughs> you know what I mean? So, like, people do want those deep dives. And, yes, they want digital and they want it now and they want it as much as they can, which is understandable because, you know, right now everyone's hungry for information. It's it's interesting, though. From a general consumer standpoint, the, the show me what we want now is kind of the mindset. For us... We enjoy those deep dives. We like getting Mm. the back end of the hardware specs. We like knowing what's going to be in our boxes, so to speak. (laughs) Pun intended. (laughs) So it's it's hard. It's hard to cater for everyone without upsetting someone. Yeah. Um, But I I disagree (laughs) with the, oh, they don't need a person. No, no, they need a person. Oh, there there definitely should be someone there. There needs to be a voice. There needs to be a consistent voice. Because this is, this is the one thing, I guess it's probably more around the big PlayStation fan base, right? Or those that are sort of more hardcore, for lack of a better term. You know, like when we see Shu, when we saw Sean, when we saw like, there, there are, you know, like Geo Corsi, you know, even Adam Boys, like there's these people that you see. And if you care and if you're connected to like the the brand or that culture, that's important to mm. you. Because the one of the biggest problems when it comes to giant, organi- giant companies is is when there's no one to identify to, mm. you know, this is very business related, right? But people people need to connect to that person at that business. Mm. Like Apple. Apple has floundered since the death of Steve Jobs. Yeah. Because Steve Jobs was the connector <clears throat> for people to that company. And PlayStation, you know, look at Xbox right now. Xbox is having success with the connection through to Spencer. Mm. Pete Spencer. Pete Spencer? Phil. Phil Spencer, thank you. Phil Spencer. I don't know why I said Pete. Phil Spencer is that connection point right now. So when everyone talks about Xbox doing well or Xbox's you know, journey or plans right now, everyone's like, man, that Phil Spencer's doing a real good job. Mm. You know, but even, even game studios are doing the right thing now. So no longer is it just this studio. It's this person at this studio. Mm. Like Sony Santa Monica, 
Corey Barlog and Sony Santa Monica. Like, you know, it's Kojima. I think it makes sense. But you know what I mean? Like, <laughs> they're, like they are pulling, you know, Herman Holst at Gorilla. Now it's, yeah. you know, like it's the, the director or like there needs to be someone for you to personally connect Keanu with. Keanu Reeves at City Project. Yeah, yeah I don't know if I can know. He's like Born <laughs> Jorgensen, whatever his name is. But it's, that, it's, it, it is needs to happen. It is important to have a front of house person to, yeah. to kind of guide the audience or the the consumers through what you're going to show them. Yeah, like you can't just slap a bunch of trailers on a on a screen and be like, watch, because it removes all the per it removes all the personality. Mm. No, like, don't get me wrong. Like when you think about as an example, if I think about Bethesda, and like Pete Hines is great. He's a great face, as is Todd Howard. So they're mm. another another example on that side. But then when you go when you when you go when you go or you think about like uh, uh, Doom Eternal, right? When they did that presentation around uh, E three, whatever the fuck, and you know they're constantly pausing for cheers and stuff like that. That stage present shit. Ha- that's that's old time. See that that puts me in the mind of um, <clears throat> Randy Pritchford at Borderlands. Yeah. Uh, the um, Gearbox. Yeah. When they announced Borderlands 3, they did a lot of like he's a he's a magician. So there was stage magic in in his in his thing. Mm. And I'm just like, really? Just just show me the game. Yeah. See that you're like, <laughs> okay, you're putting too much of yourself yeah. in it, and it's kinda of, and like no one really likes you, Randy, so you can stop. <laughs> but you, I, I mean that as in like you need to have that. So like instead in a digital format, just like Reggie did, right? Reggie was an incredible face mm. to Nintendo. An impeccable face to Nintendo. So when you when you watch a direct, you're like, well, not now. But when you watch, I mean, a direct, Doug Bowser's still pretty. Bowser's good. still pretty front and center, which is great. But like with, with Reggie as an example, because I've you know, Bowser's I mean, still. New. I mean, everyone knew Reggie. Yeah, everyone knows Reggie, and you bump me like Reggie, <laughs> and he and he's there, and he's not like cracking wise. You know, he's just like, hey, I'm Reggie Visame. This is this is Nintendo Direct. You're gonna see this. You're gonna see that. All right, cool. Here's a little bit of this. Shows this. And comes back and he's like, yeah, man, what'd you think of that? That was pretty sweet, huh? Now let's check out that. So you need an MC. Like an MC needs to do push the event through, but not be there to crack wise and do that unless there's someone that can do that. Like someone like Greg Miller, when they bring Greg Miller in to do presentations, he's got the energy, he's got the charisma, he's got the the chops to pull off a, a, a poor script mm. or to sort of put some whys in there. But when you've got a bunch of studio heads who I'm sure they're funny in their real life, when they're trying to be mass appeal funny, like not working for you mate like who's that woman that does all that used to do all the ubisoft well, she was great i liked her uh, aisha tyler no she's funny in other circumstances <laughs> in the ubisoft ones not so much granted some of the because some of the can... just dance things were a bit cringe but... oh the just dance dances they're funny <laughs> I always make me laugh. but like once you see with that dude who's dressed up like someone from unity yeah. he's like let's be a meme like no no you got someone in your ear going Talk about memes. <laughs> Her shit does not land to Ubi, says Dash in the chat. A hundred percent. Like, she's actually a really good presenter. That's why they get her on there. But every time I watch, I'm going, the fuck is all of this? <laughs> but then, and then you then you think about, and, and a, a, a better, a better, I'm getting like stuck in a circle, but like in a better example, if you think about, um, whose name I can't remember right now, the gentleman from Ubisoft, um, Speaking of Ubisoft, like the guy, he did like the uh, 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 Mario Rabbids. His name will come to me in a second. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah, I know who you're yeah. talking about. I can't- so when he's up on stage and he's talking about how how much this game means to him or and, you, and you see, you're seeing emotion, like you're connected to the game mm. through that. Um, you're not, you know what I mean? So it's just like yeah that you you're connected and you're like i like ooh. an example is that that woman that used to work at uh uh tango doing that um tokyo uh, tokyo jungle everyone's like i don't know what this fucking game is she's adorable i'm totally back in whatever game that is mm. so adam boys you are correct but you're also incorrect there needs to be someone there to guide guide them through but that's the extent that they yeah. need to be there essentially yeah. Yeah, it helps it helps. I'm talking about that guy's name now. You do the next time, I'll think that mm. guy's name. Is it Eves? Eves Gilmore? Maybe. Anyway, who else is tired of hearing the word soon when it comes to the PlayStation 5 announcement? That was my whole argument lineup. before! <laughs> So Sony itself has adopted the term. As part of the company's latest corporate strategy meeting, it said, quote, we plan to introduce a compelling lineup for PS5 soon. Ah! (laughs) How soon is soon? We still don't know. Although the rumor mill is pointing towards 
early June. Claims coming from VentureBeat's Jeff Grubb, who says that the third party, third party publishers have opted to announce their lineups on their own terms. <laughs> I've said it before, and I'll say it again. Just tell us when it's coming. <laughs> none of this soon. None of this inside source says this month. It's been inside source says this month the past six months. Like at some point we're going to have, there's going to have to fucking tell us and everyone needs to shut up about it until we hear. If I hear another speculative rumor about like, oh, and a, a PlayStation event's happening on March 1st. I'm like, no, no, that it's, it's fucking May. <laughs> Where was that one? Where's that long? Where was that, mi- mi- you know, mystic February one? No, I bet you this is full of shit too and you know in this circumstance this is a very rancy episode in this circumstance i want to be wrong oh yeah i think we all want to be wrong with the we just want to see something yeah show us the box show us anything as i said physically show me that ssd they're like here you go that would be more news than we have right now <laughs> all right sorry yep <clears throat> cracking on because there's no point talking about what's coming out soon. <sighs> THQ Nordic, uh, head company, Embracer Group, has an insane 118 titles in production, with 69 of them not being announced yet. <laughs> oh. uh, so some of the... <clears throat> revealed in its latest financial report, CEO Lars Wingfors said, quote, I genuinely believe that we have one of the industry's most exciting pipelines of upcoming games. Engaging over 3,000 game developers across the world with the acquisition of Saber Interactive, the group currently has over 118 games under development, including 69 titles yet to be announced. This includes next month's SpongeBob SquarePants, Battle for Bikini Bottom, Boop. Rehydrated, Destroy All Humans in July, Boop. and the currently undated Biomutant. There's some other remakes that have been announced as well, but is 118 too many games to be working on simultaneously? Probably. (laughs) I mean, across 3,000 game developers and there's 69 yet to be announced, like what's what's holding you back? Like how early in development are they? Are they just are they just there to pump up those numbers? Yeah. So the the big hurdle that TA was not hurdle because don't THQ Nordic own like. A ton of IP. Didn't they just buy up a ton of IP? Off yeah. People? So, so THQ Nordic obviously got some backing from somewhere, <laughs> and they have gone around and they have just bought IP. They have bought studios. Like they've bought a lot. Hi, little um, Timmy. Hey, man. Uh, they just went and bought a lot of stuff. Which yeah. is credit to them if you've got money to splash, like mine as well. And they and when these all drop, it's going to be handy. Like when they bought Deep Silver, mm. like that you know that game Vi- Violation, so the Saints Row remakes, bam, it's them now. I mean like there's all these different little things that they have purchased over the X amount of time. And a lot of smaller studios which we know would have been bought on the on like on pennies on the dollar, same as just old IP that they're like giving to a studio to work on. And it also doesn't mention any what stage of production they're in. Like oh, you yeah. could be working working on four games at a studio but you're not you're in pre-production on four games and whichever one happens to sort of execute better that's what you run with you know what i mean because i imagine there's a small sort of like discussion around what is best because if you start working on one idea and one idea alone if that if that fails you're kind of fucked i mean i guess it's nice to know that they're working with some of the ips that they've purchased gives people you know a hope that they might Mm. see something that they've that's been gone for a long time that that could come back but like see the the the, the point here because like yes thq nordic have 100 and 118 118 games under their top but they are a publishing arm mm. they are not a, well they, 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 they are they, they did specifically say they're working with over three thousand developers yeah so as as a publishing arm their entire job is to publish as many games as possible yeah uh so that in that sense, they are doing exactly what they should. If they were a development team and they were developing 120 games or 118 games, I'm like, the hell is wrong with you? <laughs> but as a publisher, all they're doing is providing money to studios. They're, they're doing to- exactly what they're supposed yeah, to do. Yeah, they're doing yeah. literally their job. Mm. They, like, they are becoming the Warner Brothers or, you know, the Universal Studios of the movie for games. They're like, we just pay people to make stuff. Yeah. And then we make money on the back end. That's entirely what they're doing right now. So a new challenger is a, as has approached the expo scene. Okay. 
This year's E3 has been divvied up across dozens of difficult, different live, stream, live streams, and there's now a new date you should add to your all upcoming events diary. The new Game Plus Expo will bring together a bunch of Japanese developers and publishers, including Sega, Atlas, Koei Tecmo, and more. The broadcast will go underway on Twitch from 8 a.m. on the 23rd of June, so that'll be 24th for Australians. Hey, Max. I'm not going to watch any of it. I know you're not going to watch any of it. I'm going to watch all of it because it looks great. Mm, fucking <laughs> weeb. Uh, so um, it's also being hosted in America. What? <laughs> With all these Japanese com- companies. Yeah. Is there a list of companies? There is a list of companies. Run through my see if I know what they are. So here are all the organizations currently signed up. Uh, Actil. Never heard of them. Axis Games. Arc System Works America. Okay. Grasshopper Manufacturer. Gung Ho Online Entertainment America, Idea Factory International, Inti Creates, Koei Tecmo America, Natsume Inc., NIS America, Playism, Sega of America and Atlas West, SNK Corporation, Spike Chunsoft, and WayForward. Okay, so that's actually a big hit, isn't there? Yeah, there's some pretty big hitters in there. So what are you hoping to see from here? Uh, I'd like to see what Atlas are doing. Because uh, obviously Atlas do the Persona stuff for us. Yeah, Dash. Um, <laughs> Dash is in the chest. Hell I, yeah. I'd like Reap to stuff. I'd like to see Sega of America fail at more Sonic, Sonic Dash. Yeah. <laughs> after the success of the Sonic, after the reasonable success of the Sonic movie, here's three more Sonic games. <laughs> Boom. Um, SNK Persona was, Six, calm your tits, Dash. <laughs> that ain't happening. I'd be happy with a Persona Five port on Switch. Just, just give me that. Yeah. Mm. Like Dash needs to play more. Persona. Last list, let's do some quick bits. GTA 5 has shipped 130 million copies. Fuck. If it wasn't, if it wasn't already <laughs> the biggest selling entertainment piece of all time, <laughs> eat, put that in your butt. Christopher Nolan movie Tenet de- debuts its latest trailer in Fortnite. Yeah. Uh, they also announced that later this year, Christopher Nolan will be... Uh, Releasing a full feature movie to be watched inside of Fortnite's party oh, I thought you were going to say Christopher Nolan will be a playable character in so Fortnite. I, Yay! Uh, no one knows what movie it's going to be, but everyone wants it to be either Batman or Inception. <laughs> Horrid. Uh, Iron Man VR demo is currently available. Check it out. Yeah, we talked about it at the start of the show. Mm, the out. Iron Man VR bundle comes with two move controllers, Discuss which we also too. mentioned. The fairy tale RPG has been delayed to the end of July. Sad face. Very upset. I was super keen for it to come out at the end of June. But a month's wait is not bad because it there's so many other stuff coming Cause, out. Because as you said, it falls close to your birthday. So happy birthday to mm. you. Uh, you get to play Ferto. I'm so keen. Once again, though, does my <laughs> calendar mean nothing to these people? <laughs> I decided, look, for those who don't know, at the start of the year, I sat down and I literally calendared out our, our plan for the, the pandemic, fucked it for one. And then everything just keeps getting moved and shuffled and changed and. I don't know why I spent a whole day on that. Mm. Waste my time. Rumor has it this year's Call of Duty will be Call of Duty Black Ops Cold War. Haven't they already done the Cold War? I think that's what Black Ops was, wasn't it? Yeah. Mm. Oh, well. Persona 5 Royal hits record sales in the West. Go Persona 5. I said, I played it again this week and I really enjoyed it, so. And PlayStation now have has recorded its highest ever sub count with 2.2 million subscribers. I still wonder whether they'll come here or not. Yeah, we'll never come here. Anyway, that's enough <laughs> about all that. Let's get into the main topic of the show. We we uh, where we have a chat to the players, that's you, about Mafia 2 Definitive Edition. So to kick things off, we should say a big thank you to uh, 2K Australia, Pez, and of course Dash, for helping us get hooked up with a cop- copy of Mafia 2 to play, review, and stream. Uh, the VOD will still be up on Twitch now if you want to go check it out. Um, but, uh, yeah, here, here is our review. So Mafia 2 Max, as I'm sure you're aware, cause you've been playing it, uh, takes place in the 1940s. You play a gentleman named Vito Scapetta, not Scapetta. Scapetta is a character from a uh, book, Scarella. Vito, Vito is his name. He is a war vet, comes back, uh, gets himself in the Mafia life. And then that's pretty much. So the, in terms of the gameplay, the game, it is you becoming part of the, the the mafia in Empire City which is a sort of a uh, uh, artistic take on New York um, yeah so pretty much so that. 
at its core, that's exactly what it is. Mm. Uh, now, had you played Mafia 2 before? Uh, I had played a little bit of it before. So I'm on, like, back on PS3? Back on PS3, yes. Yeah, so and- I haven't played it at all, but I heard lots of good things about it in the past. So I was like, ooh, I've got to check this bad boy out. Mm. Where do you want to go? Where do you want to tackle first? Well, I'll talk about what I remember from okay. playing on PlayStation Three. So, uh, obviously, I played it back when it originally came out in twenty ten, I believe. Yes, mate. And I enjoyed it. Uh, it it plays uh, in a similar style to your Grand Theft Autos. Um, I enjoyed, you know, enjoyed the gameplay. You, you run, you gun, you drive around. There were some. I had some issues with the driving. Uh, the, the the police were far more enforce uh, serious in their enforcement of the law where if you speed you get fined and arrested and <laughs> can be a nightmare mm. uh they they uh have a way around of this by putting speed limiters in cars so you can you can toggle the toggle the safe driving limit on and you drive painfully slow it takes any it takes ages to get anywhere. um the my main my main memory of this game was actually the collectibles because they are pin up it's play, Sense, li- literally li- Playboy literal, magazines. Literal yeah. centerfold Playboy magazines. Yeah. Brilliant. <laughs> <laughs> Their 20 year old Max is stoked on 20 that. 20 year old Max loved it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, obviously, uh, it's been 10 years since I've played it. So. This is supposed to be a, a like a HD remaster. Yeah, so unlike kind of. Mafia One, which we know is coming in later in the year, this is yeah a, a remaster. So it's kind of they're just taking the old one and they have pumped up the you know that they, they've claimed to have pumped up the uh, the the graphics, the quality, how it runs, whatever, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Cool. However, this is not a very good remaster. It's actually a very poorly handled remaster. Yeah. And let me explain why. So, uh, I having not played Mafia 2 originally back in the day, my, and just hearing good things, my expectations were reasonably high, mm. I suppose, but not like ridiculously high. Story-wise, the game's underwhelming. Yep. Like, I don't see the... I don't see what, what makes this game so... Mm well received so well regarded um like i'm enjoying pl- like when it's running properly which i'll get to in a sec i enjoy it yeah like because it's it's fine but i i the story itself like i'm not seeing character growth i'm not seeing reasons to do what you do like i guess i mean they maybe they, 10 years ago this was a compelling narrative. i mean they try and give you the reason but like because the the original reason why you join join up with the mafias you're trying to earn money to pay off your father's debt and you do it in like two missions yeah see and on, t- on top of that though and we'll get into the t- we'll get into the performance side of things so um this game cannot hold 30 frames no at any point so this is a remaster of a ps3 game to ps4 and it is incapable of running at 30 frames per second there are there is hitches constantly all the time and you might the only time that it doesn't hitch is you might download a street once and it might be fine but like across the board it's hitching all over the place yeah which really disheartening for me because i can get around like poor story and stuff like that maybe i can get through that but when it's running like this because you played it on a pro didn't you so i'm running it on a pro that is so i i played on a stock standard og ps4 Mm. and i was having the same issues so it was interesting to me when you said you were having the same issues as well i thought maybe you know it just doesn't run on the og ones as well but to, to hear it from a coming off a of playstation pro as well yeah so it yeah did- it's very jarring they're not it i don't know about you but i'm not getting slight frame rate drops getting i'm getting chunks. i'm getting like yeah yeah like it's happened in firefights it's happened when you drive through a tunnel it happens in cutscenes. Like, it's happening across the board, and it's actually at a detriment to the game. It makes the game kind of unplayable. And then on top of that, I'm also having... So, I'm having, obviously, visual concerns. I'm having audio concerns. Yeah, I've get, I'm getting audio desync because the frame rate drops completely, and then the audio is out of sync to the cutscene that I'm in. So, we get the audio desync, and then for some reason, in cinematics, the mixing's off, and everything pans to the left. <laughs> but not everything. 
just the dialogue. Now, because this is a remaster, not a remake, they therefore didn't re-record the audio. Mm. Understandable. There's only so much dollars can go around. So, A, it sounds kind of crap because it's very clearly, you know, an older, like, Mm. wasn't recorded very well at the time. So, there's your problem. Then, for some reason, it must have been recorded in mono because it's panning only to the left. But room noise or noises within the world are still happening in stereo. So if I lift my one ear, because I was playing it through headphones on the stream, if I lift my headphone off, I can hear cars, I can hear cups on tables, I can hear banging and moving around because they're, re- so they're in a restaurant, right? Mm. You put that, and then you put that back on, and then you're hearing the discussions. And even then, you know, if you want to, well, actually, I'll break the game itself down, like in terms of the, the delivery. But like, yeah, like this is not good mm. because it's happening. Like it's only happening in cutscenes. Like in everything else, it's fine. And then sometimes when the cutscene decides to want to have both ears, it's somehow ridiculously louder for no reason. Yeah. I can't, I cannot understand Max. And then for a remaster, I'm not seeing any drastic visual improvements. Now, don't get me wrong, faces, faces look immaculate. There are some inc- like lip syncs a little bit off, but that's his age. But like some faces look brilliant. And I'm like, that looks effing amazing. That looks so good. Cars look great. Like the, the re- light reflection off the cars, mm. the car models insanely good absolutely insanely good the world itself pretty bland once again you're building on an old framework i can i can yeah I can forego that right um but i understand they can't remaster everything but when you've got this high level detailed face and then everything else is low poly or like almost low almost low poly is a bit of exaggeration but there's one example when you meet a gentleman and he's eating you know, right? So they put the fork up to his face. The fork is literally rigid squares. Mm. Like it's not even remotely smooth. Yeah. But then it goes into this really high rendered face. It's the same way that like Alain Noir had, you know, high rendered faces in order to do that matching sort of very- Yeah, to do their, their lie detection. Yeah, their big thing. lie detection stuff, right? So it's literally that, but the rest of it is subpar. Mm. Like I'm not a developer. I have no idea how these works. I know, have no idea how difficult it is to remaster a title, but this is not good. Yeah. How do you feel about the gameplay itself? Did you find it? I found it to be quite clunky, very heavy handed. Uh, the control scheme was weird. The control scheme I was able to get around because it's PS3. I'm like, okay. These, once again, there, there are little things that I'm willing to bend on I mean, because I of the nature, yeah. because of the age of the game. Mm. And that includes controls. That includes like a, an example with here, the big gameplay. It's a lot of cover-based third-person shooting, which 2010, that shit was huge. Yeah. All right, cool. That's fine. But there are other parts where it's, it's rough. Like, you know, okay, cool. Driving cars- they feel like bricks half the time. Yeah. Some feel like way slidey. They're, Some feel super heavy. And then obviously when it's snowing, all of them are just way slidey. And yeah. It, yeah. And once again, in, in terms of these older style cars, yes, they're not going to drive mm. smoothly. Like I do appreciate that. There is an, a, a realism to how these old cars drive. Um, in terms of gameplay, like the police and having to follow speed limits and fill up your car with petrol. And I love that shit. Mm. That shit is awesome because like in gta if you s- haul ass part a cop car and go yeah <laughs> nothing it's only if you be- if you ding him right <laughs> we're here like it's actually a opposed like a they, opposable threat they, yeah they they will pull you over for speeding they you. will they will they'll chase you if you run red lights yeah it's yeah it's intense i love it that part i really really like because they, they want to like there's this game is trying to be grounded yeah and i like it. so if you run into any technical difficulties through uh for example a mission i was running one of the missions it was the one on the rooftop mall just shortly after you uh deal with the jewelry store yep so there there is a part where it's protect uh protect your ally from the police who are coming through the door like, okay got you I killed the police. There's no other police coming. And the, the objective is still defend him. Oh, and I couldn't progress through. And then I would walk through the door. 
She'd be like, where are the rest of the police? And I died. Dude. And none of them were there. We and had- then it reloaded me to the same spot. And I got stuck there for about half an hour because the police weren't spawning in for me to kill to progress through You know how happy I am to hear that? <laughs> because I had the exact same problem. That exact same moment. I come out, one guy runs in. Mm-hmm. I kill him. And then I'm like, all right. So I'm, tr- I'm trying to press all the buttons. You can see this. This is literally on stream. You can watch me do this and watch me struggle. And I'm trying to press the button. I'm like, okay, what's the climb button? It's L1. All right, that's weird. But that's such a- Nothing. Nothing. Cool. Right? I'm glad I wasn't just I'm like, okay, this is weird. What am I- Is there more people that are supposed to come through? Mm. I go through the door and there are ju- two people just standing there on the walkway. And like the amount of times that AI just didn't do things was insane. Like, you know, you go into a firefight and two people, and the majority of them are just standing there. And I go, all right, pop, 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 pop. One guy goes, oh, fuck. And then <laughs> gets back into it. I don't know, like, from a technical perspective, this game's all over the fucking shop. Yeah. But yeah, so I walked through that door and they've gone, oh, yeah, blue <laughs> And I died instantly. <laughs> yeah, cool. Okay. Cool. You know how happy I am to hear that, actually? Because, I, because like, I did wonder, like, whenever you do have technical problems when you're playing a game, I do wonder whether this is something- <laughs> Is this something that I did? Did <laughs> I do this wrong? Is it just my console? Is it just this? And then you get confirmation, like, no, no. Because, like, the audio, I'm like, is this a problem with my- like, We're playing digitally, right? Mm. So, we, you know, we were given a code to download the game. So, I'm sitting and listening to it going, this can't be a, an audio problem. Because, like, we're downloading from the master server. This isn't a printing error. Mm. What the fuck is this? And someone in the chat goes, oh, no, I was watching a stream, stream the other day and this is exactly the same thing happened. Sorry, this early this morning because we're playing the night of release. Yeah. Um, I'm like, okay, well, that's positive. But yeah. And, but yeah, so uh, adding back to the game itself, like, as I said before, nothing about this I'm finding endearing. Yeah. And like, I, I, look, I, I never go into games wanting to shit on them at all. But, like, Vito as a character... Actually, look, no. There is one thing that this game does well in terms of the story and the narrative. It's time. Mm. So, the game, it's relatively quick to go straight through. It does feel very linear, which make, which is weird because it's setting in an, it's set in this big open world thing, but there's really no reason to any open world thing. You just drive from A to B. Yes. So, that's weird. But because they, cause you, everything takes place in the back end of the 1940s, then your character is not spoilers. I guess it's spoilers. Your character goes into prison for ten years, comes out in six, and then suddenly you're in the fifties. And then like the tonal shift, and like just the just the color palette change. Yeah, the color palette world. changes. The cut the cars change. How people like dress and walk around. Those details are fantastic. Mm. When I was because I'm right now, I'm not finished it. There are fourteen chapters. I'm on chapter twelve. I think it was 11 or 12. So I'm so close to the end. Mm. But um, we had we watched AEW this morning. So I, I, I'm on I'm on chapter nine or 10. Yeah. So I'm, I'm just behind where you are. You know what I mean? So like, and even then that's like what? Nine hours or something yeah. like we put, we put into it. So um, that in terms of respect for time, I like that. Um, but when I think back, I'm like, wow, yeah. Like a lot has happened to this character in this time. Like I went from a, from a, yeah, a, a, a war veteran to like a, a I mean, main he wasn't man. just a war veteran. He was a war hero. He had a purple heart. Yeah. Like, so in terms of the store, like the, the span of time, I'm like, Oh, I've seen, I've seen him do a lot, but like no major events have really happened. It's all kind of a puppy on prison. But I mean, like there's no like big set pieces or anything. It's just these people doing stuff. Yeah. It's, it's, it's one of those things like the, the missions that you do don't seem to be all that impressive as they happen. But then you look back and you're like, okay, now we've done a bit. It's mm. like, it's kind of like life. What you, what you think is meaningless bullshit. And then you look back and you're like, no, no, I've done some stuff. And I guess that side of it is really, really cool. But like characters, I can't find myself caring about any of them. Like, um, so Vito is there. He has, you know, his buddy. He was a Joe. Yeah. Okay. He has one moment of character weakness, which you haven't seen yet. You know, it comes a little bit later, like a character that he's connected to um, dies and he's having troubles for. Oh, yeah, I know. I'm, yeah, I know. Yeah. Okay. Like, I'm just before that. Cool. So you see that and you're like, okay, cool. But like the way they're handling it, I ain't feeling it. Like, I'm not feeling the connection. I don't understand yeah. why he's connected to it. Because like there are moments where it gives you exposition about characters that you saw like five minutes ago, 10 minutes ago, as if you've never seen them before. <laughs> 
So, you know, it's like, oh, this character, you're like, oh, that is not the friend of yours. And I'm like, yes, I know that because I was playing it fucking 10 minutes ago. So the narrative's a bit off in that sense. Um, and then you meet all these sort of auxiliary characters and you're given no time to care with who they are. Mm. so you know there there are other heads of other families in the game and and it's like oh this one's about to get a hit called out on him you know you should go save him like but why and they're like oh he's like he was like a father figure to me like when (laughs) yeah a lot of uh, yeah i found that with a lot of the a lot of the missions it's like why am i why am i doing this like what's the what's Mm. the what's the reasoning behind it like what's my motivation to do this Especially once you've once you've paid off that initial debt, it's like why 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 am why am I not just piecing out now? Yeah, because like if it's if it was more like a you know like if it was like a Breaking Bad story, right? You know, you come in then with these intentions. You once you meet those intentions, your greed, your character, you know, your character changes. Like using Walter White, Walter White's goal was to get enough money to help his family after he dies of cancer. Spoilers: He doesn't die of cancer, but he gets enough money. But it's not enough because his ego comes in. He, as a person, gets in the way. So you see him progressively become worse and worse and worse and worse and worse as a person. But he's, but you know, we're here. Vito has that goal. You achieve it really fast, and then he's like, "Well, I'm not. I'm not going to get a real job." <laughs> and then you and you progress. And like Vito as a character, I'm not seeing any character like they're a minor progression yeah but he's not like he's suddenly now that he's a made man he's a completely different person like i'm not seeing it if it's if it's if it's been 10 plus years of in-game time why aren't we seeing more of a change Mm. ryan from 10 years ago very different from ryan of now and i'm not seeing that in the game i've been talking this whole time what's your no i i mean i essentially agree with what you've been saying uh, you know, story-wise, you know, gameplay-wise, very, very linear. You do go from one point to the next. It is uh, what I've been referring to it as is a open world. Mm. Uh, the only reason to ever go into, uh, to interact with the other things in the open world is to, you know, change your clothing. So you can, because that's how you escape from the police. Because they, they know you, they know what you look like. So if you, if you go get changed, they don't know who you are. Same with like the, 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 you can, you there's small upgrades that you can do to your cars and you can change the license plate numbers so that the cops won't chase you anymore. There's very, there's very little interaction outside of the, the main missions because everything that you require for the main missions, they're provided for you inside the mission itself. Mm. Like you never have to go and buy guns or ammo. Or like you said, you, you, you know, you can stop and buy gas for your car. You don't have to, you can just keep driving. Um, so yeah there's very uh, despite despite it having an open world map you very rarely explore that unless you're specifically doing a you know i'm going to kill as many police as i can and drive and see how i go Mm. you very it's very much you go to point a to point b you do your stuff and then it's returned to point a to say i've done my thing yeah and it's one of those things it's like because every time that something happens where it's like you you do what seems like the mission's like go home yeah, because, and you're like, okay, so there's no incentive to go and explore the world be- because it specifically gives you to progress to the next chapter. Please go to sleep, and you have to go home to go to your bed. And there's no like downtime. No, there's very little downtime. You, you, there's no like you can't go to the bar and play mini games or mm. I was, no, I don't think you can. Yeah, it's very much. You, but but you you're mi- not incentivized to do so. But no, you're not incentivized to do so. You can't. It kind of just pushes you through the story. Mm. So yeah. But in in the sense of it being a remaster, it's very touch and go. Like there are there are there are vast improvements. Like you said, there are vast improvements in the in the facial visuals that they've given, and then there's there's portions of the game that have just been left almost untouched, hmm. which is a real shame. But obviously, like you said, you know, there's only so much time. They've only got so much money, and you've got to pick your battles as to as to what you're uh, giving a facelift. Yeah. Because, like, to wrap up my thoughts, at least, because, you know, and I'll let you wrap up yours as well, is I look at this and I'm like, I can't see why this had to happen. Mm. Not saying that it should, and I'm not that kind of guy, but I'm like, but w- none of this seems like a good use. Like, I was like, because once again, like, if, if, it, if, it's, if it was so prestigious, I'm like, yeah, but the- Because normally you can hear the, the yelling into the void of, we want this we want this done, we want this done, why isn't this coming back, why isn't this coming back? And I, I've heard nothing of- Yeah. 
Like, Sh- Shadow of the Closs is an example. I also don't think that was a worthy remaster because there's a lot of empty space in that game. But parts of it, I'm like, okay, I can I can s- understand here. Wh- like, this is a genesis of such a lot of awesome game mechanics that it's totally worth reliving because yeah. you get to see the origin point of these big, huge, grand scale changes within game development. Yeah. Here... I'm not seeing that because I'm like, well, everything that that this game is offering has been done better, whether it be in GTA, you know, Saints Row, just in terms of of a living world, you know, like any of these crime-based open world games, like they're not there. Like I remember, I I remember like Scarface, The World Is Yours and PS2 stronger than this, you know what I mean? But that's, that's, that's Rose Tinted Glasses. That was a forever, forever June years ago. I don't know. But you know what I mean? It's just like, I, I can't, is unless there's unless there's a turn in the last two chapters that com- will completely rechange it. Now I'm still going to finish the game. So if my so- thoughts do change between now and when I record it, because so following this I'll be re- appearing on Operation PlayStation, which is the Dash Gamer PlayStation podcast this week to talk about Mafia Two. I'll have it finished by then. So if there are any changes or anything changed with those last two chapters, I will pass it on there. Check it out. Um, but I, I know unless they're planning on releasing another one in the near future, like this is all built up for four. I mean, that could, that, that, that would make sense. Cause Mafia three only came out semi recently. Yeah. It's like it? four years ago. Yeah. You know, cause I remember, I remember playing it at, at, at uh, seeing it at EB Expo, like in 2016, I think. Yeah. Um, like none of, not, none of this game playing it now makes me go, oh, this is totally worth it. Like this is such a must play. Yeah. So devastated because I heard it was really good. Yeah, so I'm I'm in a similar boat to you. You know, the, it it feel, it feels as old as it is. Like it feels like a, it it still plays as if it's an old game. Uh, obviously, being on PlayStation Three, it is you know it's ten years old now, mm. and it it feels it. It it does feel dated. There are a lot of things. There have been a lot of improvements to games of this style. Um, as we've mentioned, you know, there, there are certain things that, that it's done well as a remaster and there are certainly some things that it's, that it's, it's poorly missed, unfortunately. Um, it's a, yeah, it's a very interesting, um, place. Yeah. I it's, hope personally, like uh, there's only so much that can be patched. I yeah, think, I, I think the frame rate issues could potentially be patched. I hope the audio should be patched. That should be an easy one. Mm. You know, like there are a couple of minor things, like some of these like at least performance could be slightly improved ideally, but that would be a wait and see. That depends on how much they intended on supporting this in the long term. Yeah. I mean, ideally, I mean, obviously this, this, you know, it's just because you and I got it, it still could be an isolated event, but having, having AI not spawn properly to progress through story mm-hmm. missions, hopefully that can, can be fixed. As yeah. Well. I'm hoping that there are some patches cause that's what the game thoroughly needs it. Now this does put into question to me what mafia one remake is going to do or going yeah. to be. That is a concern for me personally. I'm like, mm, okay. Mm. But see, you know, it's, that's the, the, the difference between the remake versus the remaster. Like. But in terms of I, I, whether the same studio or not, I'm not too sure in terms of the remaster studio. I'm like, okay. Because 2K's had a rough year, man. Like, yeah. granted, WWE 2K20, not entirely their fault. It's still a bit fucked. You know, NBA 2K20, the microtransactions, it's a bit fucked. Mm. You know, Borderlands 3 wasn't as well received as, as they, I, I presume they wanted it to. You know what I mean? 2K are not having a good time right now. Yeah. And that sucks. That sucks really hard for them. Because, you know, like, I like 2K. They go all right. Yeah. You know, it's just, it's just devastating to have another disappointment on their cards. Yeah. Saying that, though, I had a gentleman on, on the stream with me. Uh, his name was uh, Charlier. He was he was uh, joining us on the stream. Um, he was he, he talked about how he was a big fan of Mafia 2 at the time and watching the stream with myself because he hadn't picked it up yet he saw all the hiccups all the imperfections as it happened and he was like no I'm still going to get it yeah I, th- I think obviously, so credit to him of course you know I think as a fan service hopefully the fans that enjoyed it will enjoy this but for as some as someone who only played a very little of it when it originally came mm. out, this does unfortunately leave a sour taste. Yeah, which is a real shame because 
you know, I would love to. I love loving things. Yeah, like we don't. <laughs> we're not in this business to poop on poop on things. Like I, I reached out for a code for this because I wanted to play it. Mm. I wanted to enjoy it. Um, and it's it's a little bit devastating that we don't get to. But anyways, if you checked out the Mafia Two Definitive Edition, let us know in those comments below. Twitter, Discord, all those places. We'd love to talk about it some further. As I mentioned, come check me out on Operation PlayStation uh, on Wednesday or something. It's on Tuesday nights. I don't know. I don't, I don't know whether I'm pre-recording, whether I'm going live. I'm not sure. I'll talk to Dash about that. I think he just announced it. Um, I'll be there to talk more about Mafia Two uh, with Dash uh, and Paul James. Um, should be good. Fun yeah, I'll, I'll well. hopefully have it finished by. I'll, I'll try and wrap it up by the our next recording, and I'll I'll give my final thoughts. Yeah, on we'll it. add some more thoughts next week, but I don't see a lot changing. But anyways, if that's not the game for you, let's have a look at what games that are coming out this week. It's actually called Coming to the Players. Uh, maybe there'll be something a little bit better for you. So. Mm. so new PlayStation games for May 26th, 2020. This is coming from the US PlayStation blog. So some game, some dates will be different for us here in Australia. Some games may be already out. Some may not be coming out at all. First up, we have Atomy Crops, PS4 Digital out May 28th. Bug Fables, PS4 Digital out May 28th. Castle Pals, PS4 Digital. Genetic Disaster, PS4 Digital, May 29th. I resemble that remark. What was that? I resemble that remark. <laughs> Hotel R&R, PSVR Digital, May 28th. Let's Sing 2020, PS4 Digital, May 28th. Little Misfortune, PS4 Digital, out May 29th. Many Faces, PS4 Digital, out May 27th. Minecraft Dungeons, PS4 Digital. Doesn't have a date. I believe it's the 26th. If it, if it doesn't have the date, then it's the Tuesday. Mm. Yeah, well, it, yeah, it's Tuesday. Yeah. So fight your way through an all-new action-adventure game inspired by classic dungeon crawlers and set in the Minecraft universe. The Hero Edition includes a hero cape, two-player skins, and a chicken pet. So well, Diablo in Minecraft. Yeah. Pong Quest, PS4 Digital, out May 29th. Rune Lord, PS4 Digital. Uh, Shantae and the Seven Sirens, PS4 Digital, May 28th. Those Who Remain, PS4 Digital, out May 28th. Have fun with this one. Okay. Udaware Rumono, Prelude to the Fallen, PS4, PS Vita, Digital, Rig Tower. Nailed it. Smash that. That was actually well, well done. Uh, Wizards, Wand of uh, Epicosity, PS4 Digital, out May 27th. That is all That's of them. That's it. That is all of them. I guess Minecraft Dungeons. Obviously, the big one is uh, Utaware Rumumunu. Ooh, <laughs> really you almost bu- butchered the second time. Uh, no, the big one here, obviously, uh, Minecraft, Minecraft Dungeons. Dungeons coming out. Tuesday. Quiet Week, once again, I'm going to continue to see Quiet Weeks up until, uh, I guess, Last of Us or Ghosts, you know, stuff like that. Well, Last of Us is first. So last, last of Us is first, yes. Mm. Anyway, Ryan. <laughs> as we look for. this playstation conversation happens every monday morning at 8 a.m on podcast services including spotify and 9 a.m on the youtubes if you'd like to join in future conversations head on over to our social uh, our socials mm. head on over to our socials our facebook discord twitter instagram all the links are in the description below and if you want to join the conversation, you can live as it happens over at twitch.tv slash the pop culture, where we record this show every Saturday or today, Sunday, uh, ex- except when we change it to Sunday, uh, 4 p.m. Australian Eastern time, where you can join the likes of Dash and The Puck and a couple other people that jumped in as well. Uh, you can uh, you know chat, get involved. It's a damn good time. Uh, well, if you like it enough, you can share the conversation. You can tell your friends, tell your friends about this little petition pod. Be sure to like, subscribe star ratings podcast services all that crap i say crap because it's it's the same crap that every podcast every youtuber spouts it's, uh, i understand it's uh, for I mean, you listening it is but you know it is super helpful it is very helpful because it's like it's in terms helpful. of like the likes are a big one as well as just watching it and downloading it is very helpful because without that what <laughs> but of course if you want to support us financially you can at patreon.com slash popcultures big shout out to Lee Winterchauvin this week who increased his pledge for us oh. an absolute champion Legend. thank you so much on his birthday nonetheless oh. I'm like you don't know you know how birthday presents work mate <laughs> it's the you know it's about the giving it is but I'm like dude it's your birthday what the <laughs> hell are you doing but no, thank you very much, Lee. And you can also we buy merchandise. We appreciate your birthday money. We do. We, we, we thank you. <laughs> uh, and of course, yeah, yeah, you can buy merchandise at popcultures.com slash shop. We can buy shirts and other assorted shit without logos on it. But until next week, 
I'm Ryan Betson. I'm Max Cooper. And that was for the players. For the players, the Pop Culturist PlayStation Podcast is fan supported at patreon.com slash the pop culturist. And we'd like to thank our Patreon producers and our Patreon founders for their kindness, their support, and their generosity. Our Patreon founders Alpha Ferret, Craig O'Flaherty, David Chataway, Jesse Stevenson, and Jacob Garner. And our Patreon producers AJ Abatomi, Damien Holdies, Carl Dunn, Lee Winterchauvin, Nathan Massetti. Paul James, Pure Mongrel, and Sean Levitt.